just fell in love with the land. We thought the land would be perfect for a small herd of alpacas. As I was learning more about natural fiber through my alpacas, it introduced me to not only alpaca fiber and all its wonderful qualities, but I, at the same time I was learning a lot about some of the other natural fibers from uh, llamas, different varieties of sheep. We have goat fiber producers for mohair. We even have um, angora bunnies and even the plant fibers. And I was growing deeply appreciative of the qualities and the fact that it's fairly green in most cases, and I wanted to share that knowledge. At the same time, Karen was meeting more and more people in the fiber business. And interestingly, they didn't have a way to find each other, and they had a lot of questions. Um, the fiber producers wanted to know where and how we are to process the fiber. Some of the crafters and fiber artists wanted to know how to and where to buy local yarns and um, fiber and I began to think they need a place to to join up. So in 2008 Karen formed the Ohio Natural Fiber Network. The group has steadily grown to about 60 members across Ohio. It has been really interesting to see how the different fiber producers come together and learn from each other and the fiber processors are teaching the fiber producers and even the fiber artists the process of taking the fiber from the animal and, and turning it into a finished product. Well, you have the animals and then you have this gorgeous fiber and it's what to do with the fiber. Everybody asks me that and I kept going, I'm finding that out, I'm starting to figure that out, which is why I joined the How Natural Fiber Network. So I wanted to go from this off the animal to this. Networking with the people is wonderful. You're, you're able to learn, because everyone has their own specific um, area of expertise. Since joining it, I've, been, I've learned to do more things with my fiber, more things with what I've spun. Joined the organization about, almost a year ago. I've wanted to learn the different techniques of how to use the fiber, and I thought this might be a place where I could connect then with other folks that have different kinds of fibers other than wool. Right here in the state of Ohio, being for alpacas, the largest alpaca concentration in the United States, why not band together and do something together and see if we can't be more as a group than trying to, to accomplish something singly. I was a city girl, um, never raised livestock. I think the most I had was a dog might be that hippie at heart, but I thought, you know, once I have an animal, a fiber animal, I want to be able to spin, weave, crochet, knit. And it's a great place to meet people and, and talk, and even sometimes just to socialize. We have social days where we come in and just bring our projects and work on our projects together. Most people have cyber friends these days. I have fiber friends. They help me with the fiber and learning more about the fiber. The other interesting thing about being involved in the fiber business is having people come here to the farm for a tour or even to join the network and they're newcomers to the fiber world and what I hear so often is these words, I had no idea. As I start talking about the process, people are very intrigued and they appreciate the education and education is very important in the network, it's one of our goals. I'll take them out to see the animals and I'll explain that they get sheared once a year. And it's quite a process and um, there are different parts of the animal that um, are, have a higher quality fiber typically. And for the alpacas and llamas we call it the prime area or the blanket which covers the portion of their body, if they were a horse, the, the saddle would go over in the saddle blanket. So it's the, the top and the part way down to the sides. So that's the part of the fiber, the fleece that would be um, processed into a nice fine yarn. And uh, the shearing is typically done though in about five or six minutes per animal. So it's quick and it's actually kind of comical to see the animal that's sh sheared join their herd again because they're sniffing at, at him. They want to know, is this the same person who went into that that area and um, they can tell by smell, but I think the, they must feel pretty liberated and cool 
because the spring uh, days do start getting warm and they have about five inches of, of fleece by that time after growing all winter. The grade or quality of the fiber varies significantly from one animal to the uh, next, depending on genetics and their age and their nutrition. I work with a lot of the network people, the people that belong in this network, um, on education of how to use natural products with their animals for health. Parasite control is a biggie. Um, if you are not controlling the parasites properly, then what is happening is those parasites are inside the animal sucking away nutrients um, that is going to cause, it can cause all kinds of problems, not only with the fleece, um, but with their length of life. Um, you know, they're not assimilating their nutrition properly. Um, if you're not nutritionally sound, whether it's in an animal or a person, you're not going to get the benefits that you're looking for. So what we're trying to do is create colorful alpacas. There's 22 natural fiber colors, actually, and also the quality of the fleece. When we're looking at the fleece, this is a, the fleece of a wakaya alpaca, uh, which is different from the Surrey. Surreys have longer lock-style fiber, and the wakayas have like a, a crimpy, fluffy fiber. What we're looking for is fiber that uh, a spinner is going to want to use and because they're the ones who are going to be creating this into, into the yarn that we're going to make products from. The more you knit, the more you wanted to knit with really good fiber. Uh, it truly makes a difference and there's no point in knitting with stuff you can't stand. I will dye the yarn after it's been spun and literally hand paint the color onto the yarns. And as I go, if the colors blend over on each other, you get something more unique. And by doing the hand dyeing with the sponge brushes, you have more control over where the color is placed on the yarn. So all of the yarns are different from anything that you would see in a yarn shop or even anybody else would hand dye. Nothing goes to waste, even the lesser quality from the legs and the underbelly and the neck, depending on the grade of fiber, can be used to make felt or to stuff dog beds and pillows. So nothing goes to waste. I think there's a lot of satisfaction in raising an animal, taking care of it all year, and, and doing the yearly shearing, and to take that fleece and clean it up and go through the process and you're working with your hands um, from this animal that you have grown to love, and then you turn that into a beautiful product. I, I think it's, it's deeply satisfying for a lot of people.